everyone and thanks for joining us on the Renault Q&A show. Again, today for something different and for something special, we're in the Adelaide Hills at Iron Bank, which is very close to Stirling. Those of you who have not been up to the Adelaide Hills before, after today I'm sure you're going to want to get up here. But I'm with Tim, who is the builder and owner of this tiny home. And tiny homes are becoming a very popular trend around the country. And if you're in the right location, as Tim is here, you'll see and hear a bit more about how his project is. But Tim, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. So, explain the way, to me. Phil. Yes. Bandicoot Springs. Bandicoot Springs, that's where that's we are? It. Sorry, that's I got it. that wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, how did we get to Bandicoot Springs? Still, yeah, still, how, how did the name Bandicoot Springs come about? Well, this whole area here is a refuge for the Southern Brown Bandicoot. Right. And out of eight species, this is the last one left in the Adelaide Hills. Okay. So I've got a, a colony just up in these blackberry bushes here that come out at night. So. Hence the name Bandicoot Springs, and of course the spring yep. is down there, which runs that's all your, your water. So, yep. what was the inspiration behind the tiny home? Where did you see that, and what, what made you get involved? Well, I've always wanted to have something down here, some sort of cabin, but I didn't want your normal run-of-the-mill type cabin, and I saw this online. It's actually an English design, but I've modified it slightly. The, the English design is more like a boat, upside down. So the sides are 1.5 metres high, yes. whereas the English design is like a boat upside down and round. The only problem with that is you don't get as much room inside. So you've optimised the space inside, which you will, we'll go and have a look at later. Yep. Um, so how did you get around the whole, this is not compliant, or sorry, you didn't have to meet like a building standard in not terms at all. of, not because at all. it's under a certain size? Yep, this is the Anka Baringa Council here. Yep. So as long as you're 15 square metres and under... And that's internal. That's internal and 2.4 high. Maximum, yep. Maximum you're safe. And I've actually put in this little veranda here, which is about 500 mil, which is still under the 15 square metres. Okay. And of course the deck is about 16 square metres, which is larger than the actual pod itself. But of course that's not included in the restrictions. So this is, this is it sounds like it's a bit of a project for you, a bit of a hobby that you, yep. you got into, but obviously now it's a bit of an income earner for oh, you. Yeah, yeah. So how popular are these now? Obviously you're in a location which is very unique in the Adelaide Hills and, and, in, and in some parts of Australia these are ideal spots to be located. Yeah. As you can hear, we're just in the middle of nature. There's a spring to the left of me. There's bandicoots and kangaroos that we yeah. saw earlier this morning, you said. So, what is the attraction for your client base that comes here? Well, people just want to get away. So it's not a five-star hotel or, or whatever. It's very basic. It's cosy. It's like a little cubby. Mm. And the beauty, especially Adelaide's only 25 minutes away. So it's just ideal. So most people come here for one night, two nights, sometimes three nights. But it's just a great getaway. So what in the middle of nature, which is fantastic. The challenge, so this is really a, a renovation and a building project, which, you know, did you do it all yourself? Did you get a builder involved? How yeah, did, I got you go a builder. I did all the design myself and measured it all up, then I got a builder involved. So he did the outside frame, did all the woodwork, the deck, and I did the, the fit out inside with the kitchen, the toilet. And, and this is like totally self sufficient because you've got water supply, you've yep. got grey water treatment, yep. you've got gas. You've got power yep. in here, electricity, so... And a composting toilet. And a composting toilet. There you High go. High-tech. High-tech composting. composting toilet. Fantastic. And you've got a garden where you can utilise the grey water, which is fantastic. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, what were the biggest challenges with this construction when you were building it? Um, well, nothing really. Uh, we were going to be a little bit concerned about leaks because the outside here is uh, 30 mil treated pine and it's shiplap. Right. So I was just a little bit concerned about leaks, but so far it's been fine. Because it overlaps probably about, I don't know, 30, 40 mil. Okay. And because of the angle, the water runs straight off. Plus there's insulation wrapped over the whole pod and insulation under the floor. floor. So no leaks so, so far. So you've built this on a frame, you, you, so it's basically elevated off the ground? Yes, So yes. all that's timber flooring inside, that, that's, uh, that's marine, marine fly. fly. And internally. I've got about three or four coats of uh, varnish on top of that. And you sealed that on the side, uh, on the side of that to prevent uh, any of the rising damp or just general yeah. damage. And from there's actually the insulation out. underneath the floor as well. Okay. And the, and the whole frame, yep. the deck, and the frame of the pod underneath is galvanised. So well. galvanised, okay. Well, all the way through. And there's the framework of the pod is galvanised too. Okay. So how do you, even though you you talked about overcoming the council requirements because you stayed under 15 square metres internally. How do you ensure that, you know, from a safety side, um, this meets fire standards, etc.? How did you come about that, overcome that? 
As far as the kitchen is concerned, I've got a fire blanket, yep. a fire extinguisher, and being treated pine, that's fire resistant to a certain extent certain as well. Okay, yes. great. Um, and in, with the windows and um, in terms of how you've sealed the critical areas, because you've got now facings or, or you know, openings, you've got windows at the back of the, the, the uh, tiny home to the yeah. side and this door here, a little rain is protecting that. But did you have to go to any extent with any special seals outside you with the normal home? No, not at all. The back window behind the, the bed is sealed. Yeah. So the only one that opens is the side window and of course the doors. But it, this area here, as you can see, is in a bit of a valley, so it's quite sheltered. There's yeah. very little wind down here. So yeah, it's it, perfect. It's an ideal side. position here. Yeah. And then with your the bathroom, the wet area, which we're going to have a look at after, you've got a preformed shower area, so you've minimised any sort of movement with tiles cracking and grout, etc. Yes. But you, what have you, around the perimeter of that, you've also got some ceramic tiles that you've utilised? Yep. There's an acrylic shower base yeah. and acrylic shower walls that we've stuck against the wood yeah. and then tiled around that with okay. wet area underneath. And it just drains like a normal, like if you had a, if, if yeah. you had an overflow or, or a blockage with the toilet, you've got an overflow system, yeah, etc. It's ideal. So and it's because it's so far off the ground, yeah. to get to the plumbing is very, very easy. easy. So if there is a blockage, you can just get up underneath and, and fix it. Yeah. Have you estimated the sort of maintenance that you'd need to do on a, on a place like this? Um, probably once a year to give it a, a coat of varnish or a sealer. On the timber? On the on timber, the on the outside. Probably in the areas that are protected you wouldn't need to, but mm. probably definitely the, the treated pine if you go to that. And probably only take you a couple of hours to the do pine, it. Yeah. You wouldn't have to do it, but why not just as a precaution? So once a year. So from a total cost point of view, Tim, like, um, if you don't mind me asking, well, what, what did you invest to, to build something like this? This was just 21000 all up. $200,000 for yep. a 15 square meter home and obviously and you've got a deck, deck and you've got a decking here which is actually and bigger floor than inside but and the deck, yes. that's fantastic yes. and so now you are renting this out yes by Airbnb by Airbnb how's that going for you oh fantastic yeah, yeah. flat so out very popular. people from all over the world incredible we had two Russians here the other night people from Ecuador everywhere so uh, would you, if you were going to build another one yes what would you do differently I don't think I'd do anything. i oh, perhaps extend this little veranda out a little bit further. But if you're sticking to the 15 square metres, you'd lose that. Yeah. So, for example, if you went back that way, you're losing that room inside. So, look, I don't think I'd do anything different. I think this is just an ideal design. It just works really well. If you were um, giving advice to someone that might want to... Because I'm, I'm guessing there's a community of people that are looking to build tiny homes or yeah. invest in tiny homes. There are companies we've seen out that are yeah, offering but, it, but, but it's this one's unique. This so is I unique. Don't, I don't want too many like mine. But you might find other parts of Australia that might want to get hold of. But what's the sort of advice you'd be giving to people if they thought, okay, we've got a bit of property or we want to invest in something that, like, for a twenty-one to thirty thousand dollar investment to yeah. have it booked out back to back? Yeah. It's a fairly good operation you've got going. Yes. Um, so you can get your return on your investment fairly quickly from that end. What advice would you give to people and what they do? I would just check on council restrictions because, as I said before, being on the Paringa Council, it was 15, 15 square, square metres. So other councils around the country could be different? They might be different, I'm not sure. But check that out first. Make sure your plumbing's right, you've got your gas at the back, your grey water filter, your grey water system, and, of course, your composting toilet. Make sure you get a good one. And Pay if, extra to get a good one. And if you wanted to... I mean, I'm just looking at this now. I mean, you, you, like you said, you've got marine ply. But you potentially could upgrade and go with vinyl Easy. inside. Yeah. yeah. And or you could tile the whole or thing. Put this ceramic tiles or down, you yeah. could put wood wooden floorboards, you could do anything in there. But this seems to work really well. And your little kitchen is amazing. Like I'm looking at this and I, I travel a lot for work, so I yeah. stay in I haven't stayed in a tiny home like this yet. Phil, but come I've, up. But yeah, but I've, got no, I've got no clients to see around here, but I might come for a relaxation time. Yeah. But I've got to tell you, like the kitchen's amazing me. Like, you got a, a basic sink, you got your drawers, you got a coffee machine which is the most important for me a little fridge yep um how did you assemble all that like what was did you is that just off the kit out of no no i just sort of came up with a rough idea and did it myself yeah but it worked out really well so that, that can so i mention uh, yeah. Um, company yeah sure so you've been, <laughs> bunnings for the bench top right uh the sink online okay and uh let me think reese for the tap wing. So, when you planned that internal structure, you wanted to make sure that you left the space that you did. You could buy standard 
exactly. size materials. Yeah. So, yeah. so 600, meters, you remove 600 waste. millimetres yeah. wide yeah. Uh, for the kitchen and the height and work all that out. But you've still got to make sure that you're going to have plenty of room inside because I've got that two-seater settee. Yeah. So I wanted people to have room to even put that fold-out table inside if it was too cold or wet outside. Well, should we go and have a look inside? Yes, please. Yeah. So, Tim, this is inside the tiny, tiny home. So you've got a paint, obviously, just a standard interior paint that you've painted yeah. the, the wood with. There's the bed, which is a nice squeeze fit. Nice and cosy yeah. uh, with a window out there. I can imagine there'd be some glorious mornings to wake oh, up to there. Oh, fantastic. Koalas looking in through the window. And you've even Possums. got room for a, for a little couch yep. as well, um, which if you wanted it could be a sofa bed. But oh, exactly. Look, if you had other... You, you don't want to have been having an argument well, inside this home. No, right? no. I mean, look, you, you could have a sofa bed there by all means, but it just works really well like this. And the beauty of the queen-size bed yeah. is that when I make the bed, I turn the settee or yeah. the couch on the side and the bed slides forward. Okay. Make Perfect. the bed, push it back in. Works really Real well. Real simple. Yeah. And so this was the kitchen area we were talking about. Yep. Which is your standard thing. You said you just got it from Bunnings and you work there. You got room for a little bar fridge underneath there. Yep. Your drawers, cupboards, which for a weekend stay, it's all you really want. Correct. And all you need. And no one's going to come to a Cut beautiful... Cut up the top here. No one's coming to a little cabin like this one to uh, watch TV. There's a great place to either work, read a book, exactly. whatever, just, just unwind. You've got your little lights there, reading lights, lights there. You've and got another you've... reading light at the back there. And you've got the it's window that leads out to the spring there. The window, yeah. So, so show it, go on. I was going to say, that's the only difference between the design that I saw originally on the net. you got more window Is that space. it didn't have a window. Yeah. It had a window at the back, but not one at the side. But the one at the side here, as you can see, gives a bit of character and has the dormer effect as well. Beautiful. So that works really well. So let's see the bathroom, the wedding, sure. just to give it that bit of perspective. So there's your your bathroom. So that was the acrylic. There's your acrylic shower, shower walls. That you one about. at the back, one at the side. There's an acrylic shower base. And you've got floor tiles. So you're not limited to really go with any design that you would no. see in some of these small pod bathrooms now in hotels. Correct. There's your compost. And there's your floor, compost which toilet. Works really well. Instructions for use on the wall. Fantastic. So unless you're a basketballer and you're sort of six foot eight, this is uh, you might be able to struggle under that. Oh, shower that, head. That, that's adjustable. We'd, we'd fit you in. Don't worry. <laughs> so Tim, a lot of our clients and people that ring up um, and work with Monster with our go-to program or looking for products we make, but even just for general advice, one of the things we always tell people that are renovating is to factor in potentially a maintenance schedule because you, you're going to need that and particularly if you've got an airbnb property like you have you want this looking spick and span like it is at the moment it's a beautiful looking property mm -hmm. um any thoughts i'm looking at these floors and i can you know from my experience in the building game i can see that with timber flooring it's always susceptible to splitting or cracking or whatever but it's an easy design you could pull everything out and put vinyl down if you want to as you said maybe ceramic tiles if, if exactly you could. what i would do down the track is put in floorboards yeah okay at the moment this works really well and i've got about i think three or four coats of varnish on this marine ply and as you know marine ply is yeah, really very tough strong, yeah so what would it be would this be about 10 ply i'm assuming it yeah there would be at least 10 ply yeah. But at, at the moment it works really well, it's very easy to clean, I just go over it with a vacuum cleaner and a mop. Yeah. But, as you say, down the track I'll put in floorboards. And obviously, um, from a paint perspective, you know, with one, I reckon you get away with less than a four litre can of paint to paint to inside exactly. here. So yeah, yeah. You can Once you put on one coat, the second coat goes on really well. And of course being white inside gives the effect of more space anyway. Correct, so, yeah. it does. And things like, you know, you with anything timber, you've always got movement. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you've got little creaks and, and um, expansion contraction, which you'll get, which I, I can see, you just put beads of sealant in or a bit of, bit of paintable silicon that you could then, yeah. then seal seal those joints, bead over, because otherwise that, that stops all the little creepy crawlies coming out. Correct. Silicon is perfect, especially around the edges here. Yeah. And quite often I spray around the outside too with a bit of a pest spray just in case every so often. Especially in summer or on humid nights, that's when you get your creepy crawlies. Yeah. But most of the time, I wouldn't even worry about it. And look, if you were, you know, I can see here because of the, you've now got an income stream coming through from your Airbnb program. If you wanted to upgrade, the other thing you could do potentially is double glaze your 
your windows of the doors yep. and potentially of the, of the, the windows there just for the, both the cold and the, and the summertime you, you if you need it. You could do that, but the beauty of this place is the sounds at night. Yeah. I know that sounds so you strange, hear, that's right. but you hear the koalas, you hear all sorts of sounds at night, which is part of the yeah. nature experience. So that's so why I didn't the little, get it done. Hence a little heater to, to keep right. the warm yeah. up and you can hear Yeah, because that little heater does the whole place. Well, Tim, I think you've actually inspired a lot of people that are going to be watching this program um, on Tiny Homes, and yep. I'm sure that you might get people that want to check out Tim. If they want to check out Tim, this property, have you got a separate website? To Airbnb. Airbnb. Iron Bank. Iron Bank. And don't forget, Bandicoot Springs. Bandicoot Springs, you heard it here on the Renault Q&A <laughs> yes. show. And if someone wants to just inquire about the whole experience, you've got some, we're going to show some photos yeah, sure. the, of the before the, and after the yeah, stages yeah. of that, which you'll see. I'll, I'll give you the mobile number so they can con contact me directly okay. if they've got any more questions. Well, if you've got any questions, you can find them to Monster, we can help you there. But the Renault Q&A show has brought to you our first ever tiny home on the program. Tim, thank you very much for Pleasure. joining us and yeah. good luck with this. Wonderful. I might take you up on the offer. Good on you. Thank you, Phil.